Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you here today, joining us online. Thank you so much. I'm glad you are here. It's good to see you if you are here in person with us. I'm glad that you are here. Um, welcome. It has been a long week for your pastor. I have been on Zoom calls all week for General Assembly, and we have been talking about big and quite heavy conversations. And I would like to share those conversations with you. And so I've been thinking about how we might best go through those conversations. If you are interested in anything that has happened at the, at the national level, as far as things that the church has affirmed, um, conversations the church has had, we have talked about many, many things. We'll start those sometime, not this week, but next week. I need to check my calendar, but I will find a day. And I will be at the empty cup at a certain time, and we will host coffee with the pastor. And you can come and talk. And we can talk. And when we talk about those things, we will be talking about things that affect our lives here in Kansas as well. Not that the church will affect it, but that things that matter to us, conversations that have to do with our life and what's going on. So. If you want to come, if you're wrestling with your faith on things that are happening in our world, if you're kind of wondering what the church says or what, how to speak into this, or you're wondering as a Christian what you're doing in this world, that coffee time with the pastor will be a good chance for us to talk more deeply and talk more openly about what it is uh, and maybe give you some words and some understanding that come from the the body of the PCOSA and a firm for you. Um, when that comes, I'll post it on Facebook. I'll have a little prayer to announce it in church as well um, so that you can be aware and to make your plans. But we would love to have you. Are there any other announcements to be had? The 24th and 31st. Thank you. I keep forgetting to announce this. <laughs> On the 24th, there's no worship here in the Marysville Church. We're going to go into the community worship service in Washington at the fairgrounds. And it says 10 a.m. I will send an email that confirms that time because the because there's been a look, there's always a this is after the fair, and so um, they it's a great service. It's a community service with um, a band, the band from Saturday Night's Entertainment coming and playing over hymns, usually good old gospel music, um, and just moving, a moving opportunity to come together in worship. Bring your own chair. And then on Sunday the 31st, that is our OTPM worship service, where all four of our congregations come together in one place. On the 31st, we will be joining together at Frankfurt First Presbyterian Church, and there may be refreshments following at 10 a.m. So on the 31st at 10 a.m., come be with us in Frankfurt. And they have air conditioning as well, I promise. <laughs> um, are there any other announcements that I'm missing? Let us come into worship this morning with surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. See, darkness covers the earth, 
and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Let us worship the Lord our God. Our opening hymn this morning is Have Thine Own Way.
um, time. A note on today's sermon. Today we will cover topics of violence and abuse. These are very difficult topics and can be very challenging to talk through. They may not be appropriate for your children. Please remember to care for yourself as we talk through Abigail's story. Pay attention to your body and keep breathing. And if at any point you need to leave or turn off your screen and walk away, I am not offended. Please do. I am always available to listen if you need to talk, pray, and process. Also, if you are in an abusive relationship or know someone who is, Please know that we are here for you. Abuse is contrary to God's will, and it tears the very fabric of our human dignity and the covenant we have with God to care for one another, especially those who are most vulnerable, Presbyterians Against Violence Network. We will listen to you, we will walk with you, we will love you, and we will help you as we are able. It is okay to ask for help from your church, from your local police. If you need help, you can find it at the Manhattan Crisis Center. That hotline is 1-800-727-2785. You can also contact April at Pepsi. They have lots of resources and connections. 785-629-8300. You can contact your local sheriff's office and your local police station. The most important thing I want to tell you is that you are loved and it is okay to ask for help. There are people who will love you. You are a beautiful child of God. During this time of meditation, please take a moment to check in with yourself. Take a moment to ask God to be with you and to reveal the word to you today. Let us pray. God, Son, and Holy Ghost, we sit at your feet to drink from your never-ending fountain of wisdom and life. Pour out the fullness of yourself in order that we might delight in you all the more. Amen.
Nabal's entire family and all those in the house. David holds violence in his heart. This is where we meet Abigail. This woman who has been married to a drunken and violent man recognizes the violence in David's heart and responds with quick wisdom, realizing her husband's offense and balancing between two very violent men, she acts. She packs up 200 loaves, two skins of wine, five sheep ready dressed, five measures of parched grain, 100 clusters of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs, and with great courage and risk to herself, and without her husband's knowledge, she heads out to intercept David. Make no mistake, she is heading towards danger. David is offering violence in response to insult. Abigail is offering peace and provisions. In face of violence, Abigail's actions represent great resistance to a terrible reality of the world. She knows that this is dangerous and comes at great risk to herself, but she chooses to do a brave thing, to move against her husband and confront David, and her actions save her family. Learning of his wife's actions, Nabal's heart gives out and he dies, and David takes Abigail as his wife. You know, Abigail's story is often held up as triumph and the relationship between David and her a story of love. Tradition tells us that David was so captivated by Abigail's wisdom that he swept her up and they fell in love. But I think this overlooks the reality of this brave woman's actions. Yes, she is wise. And David may have admired her wisdom, but this woman understands violence. And the world of violence, she navigates her way with grace and strength. She does what she has to to survive, and she answers violence with grace and wisdom. You know, this world we are in is violent, and it can overwhelm us. We can find ourselves at a loss of what to do. This week in General Assembly, we wrestled with how to respond to this violent world. We wrestled with it a few days after the Highland Park shootings. The Committee on Addressing Violence in the USA covered so much. From bullying, to addressing abuse, to responding to mass shootings and gun control, we wrestled with the violence. We wrestled with what it meant to be in this world to move from one violent act to another. We heard from our youth about the pain and the fear they feel. We hear testimony from teachers who survived shootings and women who survived abuse. It was heavy and the weight of what the church is navigating was clear. We stand, people of God, in the middle of violence with grace and wisdom as our means of response. We have so much to learn from Abigail, a woman who acted quickly and with confidence. We have so much to learn about finding slivers of peace and speaking in ways that can redeem this world. There's a story of a church on Good Friday. They began their service in the sanctuary, hearing the story of the cross and remembering the very violent day when Christ was put to death. As the liturgy continued, they moved the service to the most violent neighborhood in town, where a young man had recently been shot. Bringing their candles and their prayers, they brought light into that violent space. They brought grace and they laid it at the site where darkness had threatened to swallow everything whole. And they prayed. How do we bring light into the dark spaces of the world? How are we navigating the violence we see? Friends, this is not an easy task. But it's a task that we can approach and we can do because our God is a God who brings light into violent situations. Our God is the God of light and energy and hope. And we can go from lament into hope and realize that this world is not forsaken, that this world is not over, and that God's people have power to affect that change. Micah 6.8 is a quiet reminder to us that God calls us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Because we do this, we share God's grace with the world. So I invite you to ask, how are we sharing God's grace today? Amen.
Let us pray. God of Eve, grant us life. There are places in our world where it feels that we are just dry bones. Breathe vitality into those spaces. God of Sephora, grant us courage. Courage to name ourselves children of God. Name ourselves beloved as you have named us. To speak up and to take on those things that need to be spoken for. God of Deborah, grant justice. There are times when people are falsely accused. There are times when people are oppressed. There are times when it is not right in this world. Give us the wisdom to see those times. God of Rahab, grant protection. There are women and men and children in need of your protection who are vulnerable to violence. There are people who go to work who don't realize the violence that is around them. Watch over them. Protect them. God of Mary Magdalene, grant deliverance from addiction, from destructive thoughts, from depression. God of the Samaritan woman, grant refreshment. There are places where we are parched and thirsty, Lord, and we are crying out to you to give us water. God of the mother of Jesus, grant favor. Favor to do what seems impossible. Favor to give birth to your promises. And by the hand of the Spirit, who professes from the Father and the Son, we lift our voice together in this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Closing hand is taking my life.
Together we lift up the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to Wow. 